Uh, what we're going to do here is kind of talk and answer questions around the UDL credentialing and certification initiative. Uh, we've had a number of questions already kind of come in. Um, and I think we are up on, yes. So if you can see here, for those of you who have access to your computers or phones, this bit.ly right here will take you to a one question survey. And that one question is basically, what do you want to know about UDL CCI? What, if anything, can we help you understand about it? So we'll be taking those questions throughout and doing our best to grab a hold of those and help answer them. So um, what we're going to do is provide a, a slight overview, right, of just like what UDL CCI is. And as we talked about earlier in the conference, the UDL Credentialing Certification Initiative is really an initiative to grow the field, to add strength to the field as a whole, and to recognize all the greatness that's come about throughout the field, right? But to support that strength and, and growth in a way that has some sort of credibility behind it. So, uh, Jose, do you want to talk a little bit about how this kind of got going? And so this didn't start yesterday. This, there's a, the need for this has been growing over the last few years, and it actually culminated with uh, uh, CAST and the IRN coming together with some funding t from the Oak Foundation about two years ago, um, which uh, coincided with some support from the U.S. Department of Education to bring together a group of national organizations, big and small, to consider what the need for such an initiative might be, and then to go through planning phases to set it up and now we are been doing that now for a couple of years and we're ready to launch and the idea is that this will continue and the hope is in several years it will grow and be a self-sustaining effort so what is uh, what is UDL CCI as a, as as a whole so we've talked about it you know the name uh, it is about credentials and certification in that they are stackable micro-credentials for individuals, right? So the, the credentialing piece is really kind of focused on people. It's the idea that these people have demonstrated or shown that they have the knowledge to uh, understand and to implement uh, UDL. And that's, that's the credentialing piece. The certification is really around certifying buildings, schools, programs, and products. And so the idea is, is that, for instance, in products, there are a number of products out there right now, ed tech products, that are marketing on the fact that they are the UDL solution. Because UDL is in federal law, they are marketing on that. And so what we're doing is creating a voluntary system for both credentials and certification, wherein people can say, we want to be recognized for our knowledge and if we develop a product for our, our products. And so there's a, so there's a number of uh, credentials as well as certifications coming out that we're working towards implementing here in the next in the next year, um, and the first the first credential is the UDL uh, associate credential, which is the why of UDL. It deals with why UDL is so critically important, and that credential for most people in this room that have an understanding of UDL can probably be had pretty quickly. Uh, there's multiple ways to obtain to obtain the the credential. You can because of the system that is uh, holding the credentials is called Learning Designed. It is, uh, it is built on the framework of UDL. So you have multiple ways in which you can demonstrate your knowledge and skills around UDL. And because it's a knowledge-based credential, you're gonna be able to quickly take a, a short little quiz and receive that, that credential. As the next credential comes online, which is the core credential, it's gonna take a little bit more uh, to get, but it's a, again, it's a series of stackable micro-credentials, so you'll be able to do it at your own pace. Um, and you can obtain one credential and then move up to the next credential, et cetera. But for most people in this room, people that understand UDL and have been starting to think about implementing UDL, it's gonna be something that I don't think is gonna be overly difficult to achieve. Um, but you have a choice. You can either take a little quiz, uh, if it's a knowledge-based credential, or demonstrate the competency through putting together a, a portfolio which can be scored against a kind of a rubric that, that is coming together. So you have multiple ways to demonstrate your knowledge and skills. So we also wanted to provide a quick overview of the why behind this effort. And as you can see, right, we're trying to reduce those barriers 
uh, that prevent all learners from succeeding. That's why we're here at this event. So we see this initiative as a great way to help scale those efforts. And the educational systems really need that element of redesign to support tomorrow's economy. And as we're all trying to do, fostering those lifelong learners and meeting the needs of all learners, and then really instituting that research and practice that's demonstrated that UDL provides that foundation. So what we have within the initiative is the credentials and certifications based on universal design for learning so people can demonstrate their competence and organizations can demonstrate their alignment and implementation. And then correspondingly, there'll be learning resources and a network environment that allows you to share best practices. Do right. you want to talk a little bit maybe about the, the goals? Um, Jose, you want to talk about that? Sure. Okay. So, you know, we need um, better systems. We need better environments. Uh, we need better access to them. We need to support both innovation and, um, and access. And so we need tools, we need places for teachers and other professionals to get access to them to uh, improve their practice. But they also can't do it alone, right? We need a system that can support a network, a community, so that people can leverage each other's knowledge and can uh, create traction and um, have greater uh, impact. Um, the other uh, thing that's super important is that this is a voluntary effort. This is not something that individuals or organizations are going to do because they have to. We find that time and time again that when organizations are told that they have to do things, they don't do a very good job with them. Right? So it needs to be voluntary. The incentives have to be right. They have to be aligned with interests and uh, improving schools. So the other important thing about this is that this is not one organization that's kind of come out to say this is necessary. This is multiple organizations that have come together to advance the field. And we're hoping that your organizations that you're participating in, be it a school district, be it a university, be it another nonprofit, that we can all actually join in this effort. So the lead partners on this project right now are the UDL, IRN, and CAST, right? But we have initiative partners that have been working with us over the last couple of years, including the UDL Task Force, which is made up of about 50 members, uh, 50 member organizations including some of the biggest organizations in education, as well as a number of nonprofits, uh, including groups such as uh, the NEA, AFT, um, CCSSO, and, other, and NCLD, some of the other large organizations throughout the field. And then we have also uh, kind of really developed what we're calling the UDL Council. And the UDL Council currently has about 20 different member organizations on it. And you can see a list of them there. But these organizations make up a large part of the field, and they're not just a large part of the field in areas that are like, for instance, the traditional areas of special education, general education, et cetera. But we have like the, the state CETA, which is the State Ed, Ed Tech Directors Association. We have uh, uh, the new teacher center. We have some of these new and innovative sort of groups, Text Help, which have been strong partners throughout this, this initiative. And so we have brought people together, various stakeholders, as well as, um, as, well as uh, uh, groups and organizations that are approaching UDL from different, from, from different avenues so that we can get a really a holistic sort of understanding of how do we need to advance the field, not only within the US, but also globally. So we wanted to, and we'll jump into the questions here in just a moment. So as part of our overview, we wanted to emphasize some of the field change initiative highlights. So if you are familiar with that concept, great. But if you're not familiar with that concept of field change, again, we want to truly emphasize, as Jose said, this is something that we want to be very transparent, very voluntary. And it's not just something that the IRN and CAST are doing. It's something that we want the entire education field, and not just in the US, but globally to be involved with. So within that project, UDL CCI, our goals are to reach out globally to organizations and bring them into this. As part of that, we were very fortunate at the beginning to receive some amazing best practice insights from the US Green Building Council. And that may seem odd to you, but the US Green Building Council and their lead platform 
is probably the premier global online platform for credentialing and certification. Now it's in the green building space, so you might be saying, well, that's not the same as education. But what we found in working with them and through their consultation was phenomenal parallels to what we were looking to do and what they were able to do. And then correspondingly, the developers that are working directly with the US Green Building Council on their lead platform, Promantis, and Aaron, you want to raise your hand? Stand up, thank you. Give Aaron a round of applause. Aaron leads the development team that is putting together the online platform. So he has tremendous background in working with USGBC as well as helping us build the online platform learning design. And obviously as part of that, we want to practice what we preach. We want to embed universal design for learning throughout the platform, emphasizing accessibility, emphasizing multiple means of representation, emphasizing many ways to engage with the learning in the platform, both through making personal connections as well as connecting to the learning resources and credentials. And when you're demonstrating your competence with those credentials, giving you multiple ways for action and expression whether it be through an online assessment, as Jamie said, or a portfolio-based assessment where you can contribute artifacts of all various types. And further to illustrate what Jamie was saying earlier, we've got endorsements from many other organizations, and our goal in that field change context is that it, this isn't just the IRN and CAST. This truly is something that the field owns. So I'm going to jump to the screen and grab some of the questions that we have been receiving. It looks like my internet connection. It looks like my internet connection's lost, so I'm gonna try and get that back up too, because I saw the transcription stopped. So um, there are some questions that are already in here, right? So let's see if we can maybe get to some of them before your internet went down. So how does, it, how does it relate or fit into uh, platforms that are already out there? Um, I'm just going to take them off the top until we get them done. So as, as many people might know, or maybe you don't know, there are a number of platforms that are already coming together. Um, one of the largest platforms out there around micro-credentialing is uh, owned by Digital Promise and supported through Digital Promise and, and their initiatives there. Um, Digital Promise is actually here with us today, and we really appreciate uh, how they've kind of come together to support this initiative. We see micro-credentials as a whole as supporting field growth, not only in UDL, but throughout education. And I think we work collaboratively and have been working with different platforms as they've kind of come together. Right? So. So the next question is, uh, is why are we doing this? And I think we covered that with the slides a little bit, but I think we all agree that the, the system is broken, right? And in many, many schools, we have uh, a system that looks a lot like the 20th century with 20th century tools and produces uh, lousy 20th century outcomes. And so um, we need a refresh, a redesign, and UDL is a framework that can help support the needed redesign and needed rethinking for the education system so that we can provide the outcomes that, that our kids deserve and that our economy needs. So I'm just flipping through uh, some of the questions here. And the, the question at the bottom is actually a very uh, a great question, which is how many hours are required to obtain a credential? And the answer is quite simply, it depends. <laughs> I mean, because it's not, it's really more personalized to where you come at. Um, like any micro credential, I don't know if people are familiar with the micro credential movement, but micro credentials are based on your, it, they're personalized for you, right? So if you come in with more knowledge and skills, then you're not going to have to uh, maybe do what someone's going to need to do in order to uh, obtain it that comes in with no knowledge and skills. So it's really, it's not about the number of hours. It's not about the number of hours. Uh, a micro-credential is very personalized, right? So you're going to be able to demonstrate, as long as you can demonstrate that you have that understanding and that knowledge, knowledge or skill base, you're going to obtain the credential. So it's not about counting hours. It's a whole different way of thinking. 
So I can't really read it, but it looks like there's a question there about who is this focused on? Is it on for educators? Is it for researchers? Is it for other professionals? And the answer is, initially, the target audience is, are, is, is educators, right? They are the ones who have uh, the need and they have the opportunity to implement uh, in classrooms and for greater impact. But over time, we do anticipate that there are other um, constituent groups who will benefit as well. So for example, professional developers, uh, assessment designers, building administrators, state policy folks, even uh, district, district and administrators and superintendents. So we're starting with teachers, but the pathway is to grow to, grow to other groups. So I'm looking at another question that, uh, that says, uh, do you have to complete coursework in order to get the credentials? So this is a, another great sort of distinction between micro-credentials and what we consider more traditional credentials uh, in education. In that a micro-credential, you get to choose how you learn best, right? So you may, you may pers be a person that reads a book, and, and by reading a book, you're able to understand uh, the content, and you're able to act on it. You might watch a number of videos. Uh, you might want to take a university course, and there are going to be university courses that are aligned to the, to the credentials. So those are options. So when you go in to say, hey, I'm interested in obtaining a credential, there's going to be options provided to you within learning design. It's going to say, here are some options that are open for you to participate in, and it's, it's going to give you a host of options. But one of the things that we have ensured and develop in these initial credentials is that there's minimally at least one mini course that you can take that's in there for you to go through and walk through that's, that's kind of, again, self-paced based on your individual needs. So you have multiple options, but there's also a mini course in there for you to, to uh, participate in. And by the way, one of the other questions in here is how can I contribute content? I saw that in there as well. We are looking for content cr contributors. So whether you're a school district that has already developed professional development materials, or you're a university that has online programs, or you have, you're a, a professional learning consultant that has great content, we're looking for that sort of content. So you can get in touch with any of us up here, uh, or you can uh, leave your name at the registration desk and we'll be in touch with you, or you can go to learningdesign.org and fill out, the, fill out the information there and highlight the fact that you're interested in more information and someone will reach out to you and we'll talk to you about what that might look like. And Steve's showing, I think, uh, learningdesign.org. I don't know if we have uh, internet backup, but I think we have some cached sort of uh, files. Other questions? Let's see here. And questions from the audience. We could take questions from the audience that people just want to speak up. And we have someone that's walking around with a mic. So if you want to raise your hand or jump up, you can ask questions, given that our internet's down. We have a question over there, Sue. Uh, put your running shoes on. Just an idea, I thought, mm -hmm. is that um, I'm from Florida, and in Florida we work uh, district-wide. Um, and it would be interesting if we could get um, some kind of a district credentialing, uh -huh. if we could get a number of our teachers to do some of the credentialing. Right, so what right. would motivate our districts to get teachers to do this? Right, so that's a great question. And actually, that's something that we've been wrestling with. Uh, we, we initially started off thinking about district-wide certification is what it would be, right? So district, like this district certified a UDL certified district. Um, and that was our initial thoughts, and that's actually what the UDL Council was talking about as well. But what emerged from that was the idea that we should look at building level certification first, right? So that, that we can move towards buildings and after a number of buildings work towards a district. Because we have places like Orange County, for instance, here that is much different from a smaller sort of county. Um, and then we have like Chicago Public Schools, which is much different than Farmington, Illinois Public, I mean, they're very different. So that's a great question and we are thinking about that. There's another question that's going up. Right. Yeah. So if you um, completed the design.org survey thing to do like summer, what, what does that look like? It's yeah. a, there were three options yeah, or whatever. That's a great question. So 
Uh, there's a number of, so what we are, where we're at right now is we are literally in the field test sort of stage, right? And so it's going to be really somewhat customized to your needs. So what we're going to sit down with you and talk about is a little bit about your needs, match it to kind of where the system is right now in development and sort of customize that. We have a number of school districts, for instance, uh, in California that have already signed up to participate in some of the beta tests. We have a number of school districts as well as in, um, uh, I think, uh, New Hampshire, for instance, that are, are participating. So, um, so we would sit down with you. So that's something like if you put that in there and we're gonna reach out to you and talk to you individually. But, but yeah, Steve's pointing to me, he's like pointing. But one of the initial things we have uh, released right now is, and ready to be utilized is the associate credential. And so that's one of the initial pieces that we wanna uh, participate in and then, we, and then we would also talk to you about what your needs are and how we can support you. Maybe one more question. I, I see a question back there. Um, so we're from Quebec, Canada, and we're really interested in this, but we were wondering what cost would be um, tacked onto this so that we can better plan our budgets and so on. That's a, that's a great question. I wish there was a simple answer to it. Um, so uh, again, that's something I think that's still kind of being worked out. There's obviously human cost that goes into uh, scoring portfolios and such. Um, and so we're, we're doing some market testing right now, some field tests around what that is. I will say that, that it is anticipated that obviously the people that are in the system very early on are, are gonna, we're gonna be trying to seed the system uh, to have some, some initial uh, implementation and adoption. So it, I would anticipate, and, and I might get kicked underneath the table, but I, I would anticipate the, the initial districts are gonna be um, relatively priced, if not uh, almost free, if we... Canada. <laughs> so, and I think the, the idea, right, is that it'll be variable over time, right? There's gonna be lots of free content in there, right? And people can always access the free content. Um, but there will also be, um, you know, resources that are, are for pay, right, that you have to pay for. And um, those providers, right, will be providing them because they feel those are worth it in the marketplace. And this will provide a platform for both of those solutions to exist side by side. So for instance, and we don't have the, we don't have internet capabilities right now, otherwise we can show you. We've had a, a school district that I'm not gonna name, but we've had at least one uh, come up to us and say, hey, look, we're gonna use this not only to help with professional development in our own district, but can we put content in there and distribute it to the world? And yes, you can, right, is the answer. So the idea is because it's a field growth initiative and everyone's participating in it, uh, this school district has already seen a niche that needs to be filled and they have a lot of great content in there and they're gonna put content in the system. Some of it there is gonna be free and other content they're gonna actually charge for. And within the states, they're trying to recuperate some of what we call Title II funding that's been taken away from the budget. And so they're seeing this as, as an initiative to help support their own professional development monies within their district. So there's multiple ways to kind of look at it. The last thing I wanna add as part of answering your question is our focus in particular with the associate credential as it rolls out in the fall and the core credential that will soon follow is that they're gonna be affordably priced somewhere in the, say, $30 to $50 range. But the goal that we have is that as we roll this out, we wanna make sure that we're not charging something that's gonna prevent people from accessing, and as Jamie said, helping to grow the field. But the mini course that we highlighted, that is going to be free. We want to make sure that that is out there for everyone to have exposure technically you don't even have to log into the system to get access to that course. Can I make a platform comment, Steve? Um, so <clears throat> there are, but besides this mini course, there are also 150 other resources that are available in for free in the platform, and they're all indexed and searchable and tagged to uh, the associate credentials. So there's a lot of content that you're going to be able to get access to um, for free. Yeah, so one of the things, and Sue's kind of highlighted this, one of the things that we've been doing and we're st continuing to do is catalog content. So both CAST and the IRN have put people on cataloging content globally that can support UDL 
uh, implementation of research as a whole and support the field growth initiative. So we, and we may have even uh, come across your content. And so we have cataloged that content and uploaded that to the system. We've reached out to service providers, districts, et cetera, to also ask for their content that they may have. So I guess a call to action. A call to action is probably the next thing we have to do, right? So we would highly encourage, if you're interested in the UDL uh, credentials or certification, that you go to learningdesign.org and just simply fill out a little form, and someone will be in touch with you. Uh, someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible, and we're going to follow up with people and get people active, whether it be in the beta test this summer or uh, next fall as the system launches globally. Thank you.